Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Leaf Classes. I am Anjali. Children, as you know, we have started our MCQ 10 on 10 series. In each video, we will be doing 10 questions. And as per the last poll, more than 80% of you asked for the topic revision of class 9 syllabus for this series. So I am here with that and will try to finish this topic as early as possible and then we will take the remaining two topics that is constructor and class as the basis of all computations. User defined functions already we have completed and there are many more surprises when we complete with MCQ 10 on 10 series with the questions video. Right? Children from this video I am trying to follow the pattern as per the specimen question paper released by the board. So let us start with our MCQ 10 on 10 series part 4 and the topic is revision of class 9 slip. Here is the first question. Choose the correct answer. An escape sequence character begins with the options are double quotes, backslash, small brackets and curly braces. Right. So here the correct option is backslash. This option is the correct option. Children, always you know how you write backslash n, backslash t. All these are escape sequence characters. So whatever you have already done in the programming that can be asked in MCQ form. Right? The next question is double quotes a, closing quotes, is an example of. The options are character literal, real literal, string variable, string literal. Uh, I think you are getting confused between these two options. The single character is there. But whenever we are writing any single character also within double quotes, it becomes string. So if you are writing one within double quotes, it is not a numeric literal. It is string literal. Anything which is enclosed within single quotes, whether it is a special character, it is a digit, it is a any a letter, then also it will be string literal. So anything, maybe a group of characters, this is also string literal or any single letter or digit enclosed within single quotes is string literal. So option 4 is the correct answer. I hope all of you are already doing it with me and marking the correct options. Next is fill in the blanks with the correct option. The dash can be used in between the characters to separate the words of a variable name. Children, all of us, we know the naming convention for variable names. The variable names are user defined identifiers, right? We cannot use any special characters for uh, you writing the variable name. And suppose if you want to write num even and Say, if you want to give a space, is that space allowed? No. Even comma is not allowed and symbol is not allowed. So, only the special character which is allowed in variable name is underscore symbol. Say, num1. Then you can write num2. Like this. If you want to join two words, say, employ1, employ2, like that. Only this symbol which is uh, minus symbol but when you press it with shift key this underscore symbol comes this is the symbol underscore symbol right so this is the only character which is allowed in the variable name rest no special symbol we can use no symbol we can use in the variable name so option 3 is the correct answer next is math.rint always returns dash data type value and the options are int float double depends on the argument type. Children, if say if it is 8.2 math.rint function if we are using, what it will return? It is going to return 8.0. If it is 8.6, what it is going to return? 9.0. So if you see the data type, it will always be in double type value. This has to be double type. So the correct option is double here. Children always remember math.rint function gives the truncated integral value. But 
the return type is always double. You will never get the uh, value any digit after decimal point. After decimal point, always it is going to be zero. But the return type is double. So whatever you are getting here in RINT function, always after decimal, a zero is there. Now we move on to the third question that is predict the output. Now we move on to the third question that is predict the output. Always I tell you to learn the sky codes of uppercase and lowercase letters and the digits. Right? The question says state the values of A and B. Here A and B, these two are the variable names. Now char ch, ch is a character type variable in this A is stored. Right? So one small case, lowercase letter A is stored in variable ch. INT A equals to CH plus 1. Now, although the CH value is a character value and whenever we want to store that character in integer variable, the SKI code of that character is used. So, the SKI code of lowercase a is 97. So, here 97 plus 1, it will become 98. That means the value of variable a. Children, please don't get confused. This A is the character constant and this A is the variable. Now here, char B equals to char of A. This A is the variable, right children? And what is the value of this A is 98. And whenever we store the integer value or the ASCII code in character type, it is taken as the character value of that as code. So, char of A is 98 character value is B. Right? So, the value of A and B are 98 and B equals to B. So, option 2 is the correct answer. We move on to the next question. Give the output of the following code. INT A equals to 10. A plus equals to A plus 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 A plus A minus 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 minus. Here increment and decrement operators are used along with this shorthand notation. A plus equals to that means how you are going to solve it. A equals to A plus. The value of A is initially given 10 plus. Now here whatever is written that we will be putting within the brackets. A plus plus. This is post increment. So, post increment first uses the value and then changes. So, here 10 will be used and then after using 10, it will become 11. So, how it is going to the next term? It is going as 11. Then plus plus A. It is receiving the value of A as 11, but here it is pre increment. That means first the value will be changed. And then it will be used. So, what it will become here? 12. So, here it will be 12 plus. Now, how it is going to the next term? As 12 only. A minus minus. So, the value 12 will be again used here. After using 12, it will decrease the value of A by 1 and it will pass on the value 11. Minus, minus, minus 11. It is receiving 11 but it is pre-decrement. So, it will be first decreased, it will become 10 and then it will be used. So, we have now 10 plus 24. So, your answer is 34. Children, all these type of questions, please solve these questions. Don't directly, blindly put a tick mark or select any of the correct options, right? Now, we move on to the question number 4 that is named the following. The first part is the principle of object oriented programming that promotes reusability feature. The options are encapsulation, data abstraction, polymorphism and inheritance. Children always I tell you, you should be knowing the definitions of all these object oriented programming principles. It is not encapsulation. Encapsulation means wrapping of data and member functions into a single unit. So that is not reusability. Data abstraction is hiding. Polymorphism means more than one function with different purpose and inheritance. Yes, inheritance is the correct answer. When you have already created a class and its base classes or the subclasses can reuse the features which are of parent class. 
So, inheritance promotes reusability. Children, please learn the definitions, the purpose of all these principles, right? The numeric variable which are used for keeping a record of the number of times a process is repeated. When we do number programs, we say take a counter, take a accumulator, take a looping variable, store this. So, the variable in which you are Keeping a track how many times a particular process is repeated or performed, that variable, it has to be a numeric variable and that is known as counter. So, option 1 is the correct answer. Counter means which counts something, how many numbers are even or how many values are true, something like that which gives you a count of the process which you are doing, right? Now we move on to the last question of today's video that is choose the odd one. Now here the languages names are written Python, Basic, Java, C++. This is in your first chapter of class 9. Different languages are there. Python, Basic, Java, C++. Children whenever you get the question of choose the odd one please observe, read the question carefully. Python is object oriented programming language. Basic is not. Java is also object oriented programming language and C++ also. Right. So basic is left which is not object oriented principal language. So we have option 2 as the correct answer. Rest all are object oriented programming languages. Now we move on to the second part. Here four words are given class, static, void and function. Children, what is your observation? Which is the correct answer as per your observation? Class, static, void or function? As per me, it has to be function. Why? Let me give you the answer. Class, static, void. All these three are the keywords. Right children? These are the keywords or the reserved words which you cannot use for your variable names or class name. These cannot be used as identifiers. So option 4 is the correct answer. So we have completed our 10 questions for today and we will be back soon with the next video on the same topic. Keep practicing, keep working hard. Those who haven't subscribed the channel till now, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for all the videos and no important topic is missed by you. God bless you children.